Hello, my name is Malik Abazdam. Welcome to PM Express. It's barely a month to the presidential and parliamentary elections to be held on December 7, 2016. But as at this time, we still do not know who are the persons who will be on the presidential ballot. A number of presidential candidates who were disqualified by the Electoral Commission have filed an avalanche of cases against the EC in court. Just today, one of them secured victory making him the second person to secure victory against the EC. But the EC is not taking this line down. The EC is going to the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court, to seek further clarification on the decisions taken by the High Court. When we come back from the break, I will introduce to you my guest, who has been in and out of court, bringing us minute by minute detail of what is transpiring in court. And we can settle for this discussion. Stay tuned. The first point of call for lawyers of the Electoral Commission was at the High Court where the court presided over by Novisi Ayene had oral arguments from lawyers for the PNC and the EC. Dr. Raymond Atuguba, who leads Dr. Edon Mahamed's legal team, asked the court to quash the EC's decision to disqualify the nominee, describing it as irrational. Lawyer Sori, who represents the EC, maintained that the EC did not err when it decided to disqualify Mr. Ayariga. The judge fixed Thursday, November 10th to rule on the matter. Lawyers of the commission then headed to another court presided over by Barbara Tetechawe, who gave a ruling in favor of Hassan Ayariga. The judge ruled that the EC treated a disqualified nominee unfairly by not allowing him to correct the mistake on his nomination form. This, she added, was contrary to the public election regulations 2016. She ordered the EC to allow the nominee to correct the mistake on his form. The APC flag bearer could simply not hide his excitement as supporters of his party cheered him on. <laughs> Give praise to God no, Almighty. No, 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 no. God. For today, we must all believe in God. We have prayed and prayed that the court will give us justice. Ghanaians today have witnessed a very successful event today, which demonstrates to the whole world that our laws are working. No matter who you are, no matter your institutions, when you find faults with or anomalies in your issues, you can always go to the court for redress. I am very proud that democracy is really working in this country. I am very proud that rule of law, rule of law of Ghana is working. All over the world should believe in the rule of law of Ghana. That it does not rely on me to give judgment. But it lies on the truth, and I must congratulate our lawyer, Hello. her ladyship, for giving a very wonderful judgment, and very simple and perfect. So we are grateful. We will continue to uh, campaign, and uh, we wish the rest of the people who are also going to court, we wish them well, and we hope they will also have a favorable judgment. For the Progressive People's Party suit at the Supreme Court, presiding Judge Sophia Denira fixed Monday, November 7, as the day a seven-member panel will give a ruling on the matter. Lawyers for both parties were informed the court will rely on their written statements for judgment. You're welcome by you're watching PM Express. And the man you just heard filed the report there is my guest, Joseph Akabli. He is a reporter who has been in and out of court. Joseph. Welcome to PM Express. I uh, thank you, Malik. And you've been running like crazy in court today. Let, how many cases were heard today? Uh, just about four of them today. Four cases. Yeah. All of these cases brought against the Electoral Commission. Yeah. And their argument is what? These are pe persons who have been disqualified by the Electoral Commission. Uh, exactly. Okay. Let's start with um, the APC, the one we just heard, Hassan Ayarga. Hassan Ayarga prevailed in court. Did we see this coming? Well, for Hassan Ayarga, I mean, definitely. Uh, he, w he would like to think he saw this coming uh, because in actual sense, the earlier part of the week when he appeared in court, when the oral arguments were made on his behalf and the judge fixed the date for ruling, when he was exiting the court, when we spoke to him, 
he was very clear in his mind that the court was going to rule in his favor. And in fact, the point he made is that he felt he had a better case than Dr. Indum. But Dr. Indum got a rule in his favor. And his, his reason for saying that is that for his form, he filled it appropriately, but they are just telling him that two of your subscribers subscribe for someone else. And he says, for Dr. Hindu, it's a different ball game altogether. For him, someone subscribed twice for him, and he has been accused of uh, engaging a criminal offense. So he feels his case is much better than Dr. Hindu. So he was very confident he was going to get a ruling. In his was favor. he buoyed by the ruling given by Justice El Cheba for in PPP's case? Because I think when the decision was taken, the disqualification, I mean, his demeanor didn't demonstrate somebody who was willing to go to court. I think he only decided to go to court as a second thought. And would you say, seeing him when they first went to court and after when the EC gave, the court gave its judgment in the PPP case, do you think that Indum's victory kind of bolstered him? It definitely did. And I'm saying that even because uh, from the very first day, you know, Dr. Indum had his day in court first before the other. Um, candidates. And one thing I noticed when Hassan Ariga had his day in court is the fact that, like Dr. Indum, he also tried to get some supporters of his onto the court premises. And the interesting thing is, as the hearing got closer to ruling, you could see the numbers increasing. So you could get a sense of more confidence and wanting to have more people uh, come to the court premises to ensure that they have their support behind you. So definitely, you can expect that, I mean, they, they took a cue from that of Dr. Indum. In fact, his lawyer in court made reference to that case as well. And, and, and what were the germane issues given by uh, um, Tete Chawi when, and there's a judge who, who gave this judgment in favor of Ayaga? What were the main cracks of the judge's reasoning? Uh, let's first look at the issues that were presented uh, before the court. And their issue is a straightforward one that is of Asan Ayaga. He's saying that he presented his nomination form on the day. In fact, they concede that when he presented his form, the commission identified 30 mistakes with 30 subscriptions, there were some mistakes. The commission had alerted them, they corrected those mistakes and presented a form to the commission. Now, the other point, and the point his lawyer made is the fact that between the period when they presented the form, they presented it on the 30th of September. And the commission The same day that Indum presented his. Exactly. And the commission, you recall, didn't receive the deposit on that day owing to the injunction suit filed by the Progressive People's Party. Absolutely, yes. So the commission received a deposit about on 10th of October. So they are saying that in their view, the nomination period didn't end on the 30th of September like the EC will have us believe, but rather ended on the 10th of October. So they are saying that it means the commission had more time for which the commission could have identified those two mistakes for which reason he decided to reject his nomination form. And, and, and Joseph, the reason why these arguments about nomination date, 30th, 29th, 10th, are relevant is that in the EC's defense, it is pointing out that the law, Regulation 9 of CI 94, mm. that's the law that is guiding the conduct of this election, the law says that the EC has an obligation to invite presidential candidates to make alterations or amendments to the uh, issues on their nomination papers within the nomination period. That's a key word, yeah. within the nomination period. The EC's argument is that if you submitted your forms on the 30th, after that tenth year, you couldn't have been invited again because that would have been outside the nomination period. As, exactly. The and, judge and, didn't agree. And, and, and the point that Thaddeus Sorry kept emphasizing... And Thaddeus Sorry is the easiest lawyer. Easiest lawyer. The point he kept emphasizing is the fact that, I mean, it is practically impossible for the commission to be pointing out the mistakes in everyone's nomination form. So he says, if we need up to December 7 to point out all those mistakes, must we wait until then to organize the election? And he, in terms of the Hassan Ariga case, he was very emphatic in saying that the two mistakes for which reason he decided to reject his nomination form, they identified it after the nomination period. And he again says that it's because it is it's something that you need the nomination form of other nominees. You are talking about double subscription. So if I've not received the form of Dr. Mahama, I can't know whether someone subscribed for Dr. Mahama and also subscribed for that of Hassan Ayaga as well. But the judge on all scores disagreed. And the judge says that in the ideal case, if the nomination period had ended on the 30th of October, uh, September, you would have had a better argument to say that, oh, you're constrained by time. But the judge says, you had 10 more days of which you could, you had access to everyone's nomination form. So as at the 30th of the commission, as she says, had everyone's nomination form. So you had more time for which you could have compared and identified those two mistakes. In fact, Hassan Ayaga, even after his disqualification, wrote to the commission, presenting two new subscribers to replace the ones for which the commission identified. And that was rejected. 
injected by the commission. And when you say 10 more days, you are looking at the 30th September when all the candidates submitted their forms. Yeah. And the 10th October when the EC took a decision and announced these disqualifications. In, in fact, you recall in the morning of the 10th October, right from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, the EC first received the filing fee from the candidates. Which it didn't take on the 29th and, and 30th. 30th. Okay. So this time around, they received the filing fee. Then just three hours later, the commission in a, in a press conference announced that they had disqualified 12 nominees outright with one pending uh, due to a suit that uh, was in court challenging the person status as a flag bearer of the party. So the judge says, you had more time, you could have identified that mistake if indeed you really wanted to do so. But how is the receipt of this, the receipt of the filing fee on the 10th, what bearing does that have? on the nomination period? Uh, the point the judge makes is that if you look at the CI, the CI is very clear that once your filing fee is received by the commission, you stand nominated. Mm -hmm. The only time that changes That's is... That's Regulation 9. Regulation 9. The only time that changes is when the commission identifies a mistake after receiving your filing fee. But it still says you remain nominated until they allow you an opportunity to correct that mistake within the nomination period and you fail to do so. But then again, the judge was also very clear in her mind. And she, in fact, quoted uh, the ruling by Justice Che, che Bafo, Bafo. Okay. making a point that she agrees with her brother Che Bafo, that the commission even failed to set a nomination period. This, the, the law says that you set a nomination period and a nomination date. date. It says the commission set that of the date, but they didn't that set the period. That nomination date, which was 29th and, and 30th, 30th September 20. 16. But it, they didn't set a period because even though the law uh, talks about the fact that uh, you can present it once you pick the nomination to the end, the date that they give as a final date, you can present it within that period. They are saying that the release from the Electoral Commission Itself. was very clear to the parties, telling them that I'll be available on 29th and 30th, come and present your nomination form. So that was very clear in the minds of the political parties that the nomination date or the nomination period was between 29th and 30th. And the judge says this was wrong. Those were nomination dates. You should have fixed a period and you failed to do so. But, okay, so that was it. So this judgment was given and Hassan Ayarga was justifiably elated. But, but in, in fact, the, he had wanted the judge to rule. In fact, one of the, the core relief he was seeking is that he was asking that the court orders the EC to accept his nomination form. But the judge declined doing that. The judge rather says, you have made a mistake. You were treated unfairly. The EC acted irrationally and was not fair to you. So what we are going to do is that we are going to allow you an opportunity to correct that mistake within a period of time. Which is exactly what Just Justice Eric Chabafo Chaba said Chaba. in the PPP's case. What his order was, was to the uh, EC to allow Dr. Ndum to make amendments and alterations on his nomination papers and resubmit them so that the EC can now evaluate and assess them and determine for itself whether he qualifies to be put on the ballot paper. Exactly. Okay, so let's move on from that. Then you went to PNC. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Edward Mahama, he yes. is also in court. Uh, and, and you see, the interesting bits uh, about covering these cases is the fact that uh, they all have a lot in common. And you, you get the core issue is a very simple one, Regulation 9. And, 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 and for for Ayariga and Dr. Mahama, their issue is the same because two people endorse Ayariga's forms. The same two people endorse Dr. Edward Mahama's exactly. forms. And so they were struck out. Yeah. So they have a mirror image problem. Exactly. And the interesting thing too is that uh, this was the same court where uh, some days back the EC lawyer failed to show up. And because of that, they were asked to pay some 500 cities to the yes, court. Yes, because I'm informed that the EC's lawyer had actually, in fact, told someone to alert the judge that he couldn't come because he was in another court doing another another case. For some reason, that announcement was not made. Yeah. So the, the judge wasn't told. Exactly. Okay. So in this court, what happened? Well, so the Dr. Tuguba, who represents Dr. Edward Mahama, uh, made the argument. You're talking about Raymond Atuguba. Raymond Atuguba. The, the famous Raymond the famous Atuguba, 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 who teaches law at the University of Ghana. <laughs> University of Ghana. Ghana. Uh, yes, so, and his uh, argument uh, was the fact that he says, first and foremost, he had some issues to react to. And there were questions that Sorry had raised about the fact that the court lacked jurisdiction to hear such a matter. Again, questioning the competence of the suit itself because he says, for their suit, unlike the others, the main uh, plaintiff or applicant in this case was the PNC. In the other case, you have the candidates filing 
and with being the applicant. Being a so in the case of PPP doctor, uh, Pakusi Ndun comes. Exactly. In the and case the of Ayarga, uh, APC Ayarga comes. Here, it is the, the party PNC. that is Siwin, Siwin, not the candidate. Not the candidate. So he first re had to react to, do, to those issues. And on a question of jurisdiction, his reply to the court was the fact that Justice Eric Chaba, for again, relying on that case and saying that that really made it very clear that the High Court has jurisdiction. He says the High Court has provisory rule over all bodies, including the Electoral Commission. They are there not to control them, but they are to ensure that they act in consonance with the law. So that is why he thinks the court can hear such a matter. Joseph, you are making me miss being in the courtroom, <laughs> but you have to hold it. We have to take a break. When we come back, Joseph will be telling us what were the germane arguments Dr. Raymond Atuba made in court, and then we will go to the obviously the hottest cops case of the day, uh, Tadia Suri versus A. Sankuma in the Nana Kunedu case. You're watching PM Express. We will be back. You're welcome by you're watching PM Express, and we are breaking down the legal cases that have been brought by. A number of presidential candidates disqualified by the Electoral Commission for various infractions on their nomination papers. A lot of them are challenging this decision, arguing that the EC violated its own rules. At least two judges agreed, Justice Eric Ch. Bafo and Justice Tete Chawi. My colleague has been in court and he's given us all the filler about what's happening in court. <laughs> so, um, Atuguba responded to the preliminary objections raised yeah. by Tadeo Sori of the EC and the matters of jurisdiction were dealt with. Yeah, then again, after uh, dealing with that, uh, so he essentially drew inspiration from the previous ruling saying that uh, the court made it very clear so he wouldn't waste much time on that. Then again, he moved on to uh, the point about the capacity of the PNC to file the suit. And his response is the fact that uh, it's political parties that elect flag bearers and so when a flag bearer is disqualified from contesting an election, it doesn't just affect the flag bearer, it affects the party. For it means the PNC in this year's polls will not have a flag bearer. So the PNC has an interest, interest. because it's sponsored Edward Mama as his candidate. Exactly. And so they, are, they have been affected by this decision. And as a result of that, the party can proceed to file such a suit. Then again, you also talked about the fundamental human rights of Dr. Edward Mama. He says the constitution is very clear. It allows Dr. Edward Mama as a citizen to contest election, in fact, to vote and be voted for. And all the commission has to do is to ensure that his forms is in compliance with the law. And the law is very clear that if you identify a mistake, let him correct that mistake within the period. He says that was not done. You breached his rights to fair trial. You didn't allow him an opportunity. You simply disqualified him. We wrote to you to try and get you to still allow him, and you did not allow us. You even didn't give us a fair hearing. You just decided that you are still sticking to your guns and you're not going to change that decision. So he says that is also uh, not fair to him. Then he proceeded to talk about some other rights or that of Dr. Edward Mama that has been curtailed. He talked about his right to work as well as quite a number of other rights that he listed he as listed well. He said the litany of rights litany that he believes rights. have been abused by the, by the EC. Exactly. But the last argument was the orders that he's seeking uh, from the court. And they wanted uh, the court to first and foremost allow them an opportunity uh, that is order the EC to allow an opportunity to correct that mistake. Then again, to have the form accepted by the Electoral Commission. And, 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 and I, I hear he made reference to the EC's mistakes in the 2012 elections as exposed <laughs> yes. by the 2013 presidential uh, petition. Yes, and, and the point he made was the fact that, uh, you recall that petition, there were lots of issues about pink sheets that were not signed. And he was very emphatic in saying that you, you were in court, your pink sheets were not signed. The court decided to forgive you and not to cancel the entire results from those polling stations because of failure to sign them. As demanded by the petitioners. The because petitioners, the petitioners yeah. were demanding that all the results on pink sheets that were not signed by the officers at the time as required by law should be cancelled. Exactly. But the court decided. So he said they decided to forgive you and people have made similar errors. We are talking about people signing for others, people not signing in some cases. And for you, you are saying that you are not going to forgive them. You are not being fair. And that is why we wanted the court to quash that decision. When is the court giving its, its judgment on this? It will be on November 10. November uh, so 10. So it would have been next week, I think Thursday, thereabouts. Okay, but we know that all of the cases, you, has, you, have, you said the APC's lawyer, that's Ayarga's lawyer, Ramona Tuguba, all of them made reference to Justice Eric J. Baffer's ruling. But this ruling itself is a subject of a case that has been brought by the EC at the Supreme Court. Was that case called? 
Yes, that was called as well. I mean, in fact, two days ago, it came up at the Supreme Court. That was the very first day uh, when they went. Justice Palmer gave some directives. Gave Palmer. Yes, he, had, he gave some directives asking the parties on both sides to present their written statement of case by Thursday. Now, That's interestingly, Aiko Otu, who is lawyer for, for uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Indum, Indum. and the PPP, and then Tadia Sol, who is lawyer for the EC. Exactly. But interestingly, when we went to court today, both parties, they had all failed to do that. Uh, so then again, the direction came again that they should do so by the close of today and come back on Monday for the ruling. The two of them wanted to have a go at each other in terms of some oral argument, but the judge would just not allow that. So Faya Denira was the presiding judge, and she says, no. She appears to be very, a very no-nonsense judge. Exactly. And she was very clear in her mind in saying that uh, this is something that you are asking us to review and quash a decision. It's straightforward. Present your written statement. In fact, the director to send it via email to make it faster. Wow. Then come on Monday and let me give you a ruling. Because once your statement of case, you put it together very well, it's enough for us to come to a determination of the matter on based on those documents. So she's the one who is who met with, with, with them. No, this time around, the other members of the panel. It's actually a seven uh, member panel. If I can quickly recall some of uh, the names, uh, Akuto Pamfo is also there. Uh, Benin is also there. Justice Benin. Benin also. is also there. And Enin, Enin Yeboa is also Enin there. Yeboa. Yeah, okay. and some others as well. Wow. And what's the courtroom atmosphere like when you have all these two men trying to tear at each other and this judge is saying, no, no, no. What's the courtroom like? It's, it's very interesting. I mean, uh, first and foremost, mostly when it's a day of ruling, the security is a bit tighter. So it's difficult to get into the courtroom in the first place. And if you don't have any business, then you'll not be allowed in. For the lawyers on both sides, I mean, they start calm. And it's interesting, when they come into the courtroom, they are very friendly towards each other. They talk, when they come, they say hi, they are engaging each other. But when a judge comes in and he calls the case eventually, <laughs> they are just like... <laughs> Everything changes. Yeah, just the their mood changes entirely. Very serious-minded, and they have a go at each other. And I think the most tense one I've seen so far was that of Thadio Sori and Ayuko Otu. I think that is Today. the most. No, that was uh, the very first oh, okay. time. Okay, before before, before the that one, came. the very okay. first time when Doctor before uh, Justice Eric Che Bafo, okay. very heated to the extent of uh, Ayuko to at a point asking Tadi sorry to resume his seat and that he's his junior. And th those were some of the very tense uh, yes. moments you and, can understand. And, and, and Tadi sort of shot back and said he's not his junior to the extent that he exactly. can ask him to sit down. In fact, he added that he's not one of. Uh, the guys who carry his books around for him, so you can't just be asking him <laughs> to that, resume that's the seat. Because Tadia Sori is a big, he's a big boy in the legal fraternity. Yeah. But the courtroom atmosphere tends to be tense sometimes. Yes, very. And a good number of people. You have people who don't appear to be. They are not supporters of the party from the way they just come in and just come and watch. People just want to come and watch. Ordinary citizens. Or yes, and even or even who? in some cases, lawyers. I recall there were some of the cases that I met at Rujita Maklo. I come over to come and watch. Uh, there was another also, our own something like that at a point, was also around to witness it. Uh, yeah, upon a law lecture, I was also present in some of them. Today I saw uh, Case Layford, he also came to watch one of the proceedings. So you tend to have the, all these people come around once in a while to have a look at what is going on in the courtroom. Definitely, they, it's not just about staying home and listening to it on radio or on TV. They want to have a feel of what is going on in the courtroom. And for some of the judges too, uh, they are a bit, they appear a bit, they want the matter to be heard quickly. A, a clear example is uh, Ifua Ayene, uh, Novisi Ayene, and she is here in the PNC suit. She was very strict in the timing for the, uh, for the various uh, uh, lawyers. She didn't want anybody to waste time at all. No, no, no. She gave them five minutes, five minutes. And if you are speaking, she reminds you, you have two minutes more. Wow. You have she, one minute more. She was more. a timekeeper, actually. Timekeeper. And you were telling Dr. Tuba, your time is up. And so I'm wrapping up. You said, you've said that already. Your time is up. So wow. she was, she was, you, and, and I think it's good for our judiciary. I mean, you get a sense of uh, the justices obeying a directive from the chief justice. You know, you recall, she was very emphatic that they need to deal with the matter quickly. So you, you get that desire on their part to want to ensure that they deal with the matter as fast as possible. And they made that very clear on the floor of the various courtrooms. Yeah, because there are six of them, I understand, the chief justice and panel yeah. them to hear these, these cases. That's, That's for Greater Accra. Okay, for, for Greater Accra. But these challenges are only in Greater Accra, aren't they? Yeah, that appears to be the case. But I mean, they are not just uh, carrying out this responsibility just before the election. Uh, you could have cases beyond the election. And maybe even after the election, maybe some parliamentary uh, issues it could be in other parts of the country as well. So that is why the Chief Justice 
I give not just for Greater Accra, but for all other regions. So that in the event we have kids over there, those ones could also be dealt with as well. And you're saying that Tadiasori and Aiko too were asked to file their uh, written submissions yeah. by, by close of the day. Do yeah. we know if they have done that? I, I should think that so, because I mean, a judgment is on Monday, and I don't think any of them would like to curtail the efforts of the courts to ensure that they bring the matter to rest. And both lawyers understand how crucial that ruling will be. Because no matter which direction it goes, it could bring some sense of finality what to the entire case? dispute. What is the case? They are simply saying that, the EC is saying they disagree with the ruling from the High Court. And especially on the bit about the nomination period, they are of the view that they fixed one and it indeed ended. And they couldn't have offered Dr. Hedeman an opportunity to correct that mistake. They think that the ruling by Justice Eric Chabar for is not in consonance with the Constitution. So they are asking the court to have a, view, a second look at it once they interpret it appropriately in their opinion, then again, have that decision quashed entirely. So that the, what it will mean is that the commission's decision to reject uh, Dr. Endum's nomination form will stand still and will ensure that Dr. Endum stays off the ballot. Okay. And I, I want us to uh, deal with another one, the last one. But, okay. I wanted us to talk to um, a, a former president of the Greater Accra Bar Association, but uh, the line has dropped. We have to try and get him back. I'm talking about Frank David. So you moved from the PPP and then you went to the NDP, the, NDP, the ep epic of today. Yeah. Tell us about that. Very interesting. What happened when they got into the court? The, the lawyers, you know, it was adjourned to 2 p.m. And it was adjourned because uh, in the morning, the EC lawyer couldn't show up in court. That's story because was he, around was, the same time he was in he was other, courts. other courts. So the judge decided to adjourn to 2 p.m. And this but is Eric Chaba. Eric Chaba. The same Eric. The same <laughs> Eric Chaba. For but uh, before we discuss it, let me talk to uh, Mr. Frank Davis, who is on the line. Uh, if you can hear me, Mr. Frank Davis, good evening and welcome to PM Express. I can. I can hear. Please, can we raise our voice a bit? I can hear. Okay, Mr. Frank Davis, good evening and welcome to PM Express. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Um, I believe you have followed what happened in court today in respect of Ayarigas case. Um, I have read submissions attributed to you suggesting that Ayariga cannot start celebrating because this judgment does not represent an automatic uh, admission of him onto the ballot paper. Why do you say that? Well, good evening to your choice viewers and listeners. Um, well, fundamentally, I, I, I take the position that until the Supreme Court determines the matter nobody can be laughing. Nobody should start tickling himself and, and assuming that everything is over. There's, there's, there's this same matter pending before the Supreme Court for a determination. In my limited understanding of the law, whatever has been argued in all three courts are containing the arguments which are going to be tabled on Monday in the Supreme Court. So, as trained lawyers, we will have to wait for the highest court of the land to come up with a decision and we will see whether it will affect their respective cases or not. That's the position I take. And I, I believe also you followed what transpired in the case of the NDP when Tadeo Sori applied. He filed a motion. He was seeking to, he was asking Justice Eric Chabar for to recuse himself. Would you say there was a basis for that motion? Well, if, if, if I understood what happened today, well, I mean, Tadeo, I think, was of the inkling that because the issues involved in the NDP case were essentially the same issues which were involved with the PPP case. So if the judge has showed his line of thinking in one area, it, it, it's quite be legally absurd for the judge to attempt to change his mind in another forum. Because, I mean, what they have all come to court with is that they, would, they were not given a right to fair hearing. And if that has been upheld in one case, by the same judge. I don't know what different is going to say in the other matter. But of course, he declined that invitation and intends to put it with the matter. So let's see what happens. Do you foresee any problems for going forward because the EC's lawyer has made up his mind? He believes that Justice Eric Chebafo does not, uh, ought not to have sat on this matter. He didn't just talk about the reasoning in his decision. He also pointed out that the judge used some language that in his view, demonstrated that he was personal? Well, I, 
I I I didn't I, I, I was in court when the submissions were made, but I didn't listen into the judgment. But I've read some portions and I also believe that the language was a bit um, sometimes a bit harsh, you know. I mean no matter how you want to deliver a ruling or decision or judgment. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be ad hominem. It doesn't have to be personal and trying to get at that. I mean, just give your reasoning as you think. And even today, if what I heard on radio is anything to go by, I mean, for a judge to say that it's only a madman who doesn't change his mind, I didn't think it was. I mean, for me, I mean, in such language, you're not descend from the bench. I mean, I don't think it is. It, is, it's, it, it doesn't sit well with me. I mean, for a judge in a ruling to say he's only a madman who, who doesn't change his mind, I, I don't think. Nonetheless, he dismissed the motion and he says he's hearing the case. What do you foresee? Yes, he did. He was going to hear the case. Of course, if, if you bring an application on the basis of bias, uh, it is not automatic. It is up to you to make up a convincing case that indeed the judge is going to be biased. Uh, it, it, it does not be easy. Uh, because you have filed a motion, of course, if many other judges, I mean, would have said that, okay, if you think uh, I'm not going to be fair or you, do, you don't think I'm going to put up an impartial ruling of decision or judgment, then take it to another forum. But here is a case where the Chief Justice has set up this course, especially to do it speedily in, in order that it doesn't upset our election calendar. So, yes, if you felt there was no merit in that, and he has every discussion to, to dismiss it, and that's exactly what he did. And, and talking about the electoral calendar, I don't know if you have seen this. Uh, Mr. Akuto Ampao, who is a respected lawyer, um, wrote a letter which we published on Major Online to the EC chairperson, um, Mrs. Charlotte Ose, raising concerns about the way things are going and expressing fear that the elections may not come on on December 7th. Do you... Do you share his fear? No, those fears are legitimate, and I share the same fears. I mean, immediately these court cases came up. I, 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 I labor that fear that uh, our election calendar will be in some jeopardy. And the way things are going, uh, we can only pray that any such constitutional crisis does not befall us. What is the? It looks, it looks, it looks threatening. What is the basis for this fear, say? Well, the CR94 is clear that, I mean, it's 90, 30 days before the event. And if if Monday is the 7th, and we are so, supposed to run the election on December 7th, I mean, then you can see that there's going to be trouble. Uh, trouble in what sense? Because the EC chair person, we heard her yesterday when she, she was talking to the BBC, Sakusi Sapon, um, said that ballot papers for the par parliamentary elections are being printed as soon as the courts gave its judgment, that of the presidential candidates will be printed and the elections will be on course. Why should anybody be afraid? It is not up to her to say that this is going to be the case. It is not lie in her bosom to be making those statements. There are matters in court. The matters have not been resolved. If I were her, I would keep my mouth shut. The, the matters have not been resolved. They are in court and the cases are pending. And we all know that there are a set number of days for us to do any event. And reading the TI-42 is 30 days before the event. And we, Monday will be the 7th of, December, uh, uh, of November. So if after the 7th, the court cases are still ruling, how can you be confident that the election is going to come? I mean, so I, I would wish that, I mean, we, 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 we all pray that these court cases do not clash into the calendar. Because if these court cases who should travel up to the 15th of November. Would we have gotten the 30 clear days before the poor day on the, uh, 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 on the 7th of December? No. And that can bring very serious problems. In the I don't think it lies in a fair view to always say that this is going to be that, this is going to be that. I mean, I don't think so. In the event we all have to pray that things will out properly so that we don't fall off, we don't find ourselves in the condition of crisis. In the event that these things are not resolved before the 15th, as you are talking about, what will happen? I, 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 I don't want to pretend what will happen in the future. Let us see what happens for now. My last I don't want to go. When, 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 when it gets there, we shall all debate it. Okay. My last question, um, Professor Stephen Kwekwasari, 
when the, the Justice Eric Che Bafo gave his judgment in the matter of the PPP and Dr. Papa Kwisindum, said okay. that the EC should invite the rest of the presidential candidates and have a discussion with them um, as to the way forward. The EC quite didn't do that. Do you think that would have been a better way of dealing with this, that at this time we wouldn't have been in court? Uh, I personally do not think so. You see, all the aspirants have different reasons why they went to court. So if those reasons have not been articulated, why would you go and sit down with them to talk over what? Because the issue was, was quite obvious from the beginning, that they were adamant and they are taking a certain position, that they were going to disqualify them. So I don't know what amount of talking will have taken place for them to obtain their position. But should they? Oh so, yes, yeah, it's good they went to court. Let's let's all appreciate what is going on because it's, it's based on understanding what the rule of law is based in this country. So let us see what happens. Is the EC descending into the arena of conflict by going to the Supreme Court with this matter? Is, is the EC descending into what? The arena of conflict itself by or dispute by going to the Supreme Court. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I believe that it's even proper that the EC has gone to the Supreme Court. So that at least the finality will be put on what is what and which is which. Because the Supreme Court, we all know, is the highest court of our land. If they handle a ruling or a decision, that will guide us in whatever we do. But I, said, I think it's good if it's there. Let's see what happens on Monday. Mr. Frank Davis, thank you very much. We are most grateful to you. Thank you, too. All right. So you heard Mr. Frank Davis. He's a former president of the uh, Ghana Bar Association, Great Accra branch. I still have in the studio my colleague who has been in court, and you just heard him. When you go to court and you see all of these people, do you sense that there is a certain concern about where we are going? In terms of uh, the post being here? Yes. Yes, you, you get that understanding, and particularly from uh, those who have themselves taken the matter to court. Uh, so you find them coming to court very early. Uh, someone like Dr. Edward Mahama, is one person when I got to the PNC courtroom as early as 9 a.m. He was already seated. In fact, he arrived. Oh, so he was in court today? Yes, he arrived in court even before his lawyer came in uh, wow. later on. So you could get the sense of the seriousness with which they are attached to the matter. When you pick that of the NDP, Nana Konedo Admiralins has so far been in court all the time. It's Dr. Indum that has missed just once. Uh, today he was also not present, making it twice. But each time um, the running mate is there or sometimes the party chairman represents them. So you get that sense of understanding in terms of just by their appearance to know that they are really very serious about this issue. The same with Hassan Ayariga. He was in court all throughout. He comes very early. He sits down. You get a clear understanding. That the same with even the lawyers who are even uh, up and arguing against each other. They all want the matter to be brought to an end quickly. They are all looking forward to the day of judgment. And, and the judges too. Yeah. And the same with the judges. Same with the judges. It's just uh, with Justice Eric Chaba for doing that Dr. Indum case who appeared to even give them more time for him. He allowed the lawyers speak for quite a long time. Uh, they were uh, equal to us on his feet for about 35 minutes. Uh, same with Thaddeus, sorry. Was he unfriendly in the PPP's earlier case? Not at all. Very uh, friendly. And, and the point I was telling some colleagues is the fact that uh, one thing about him that I think struck me when I went to the courtroom is the fact that he asked direct questions and one, the, the type of questions he asks, you get the sense of someone who is interested in finding out why you are professing a certain view and why he should agree with so you. So he doesn't just sit down quietly and listen? Not at all. He asks straight questions. So um, if you are speaking, for instance, Talia Sorry is speaking, he asks a direct question. Once in a while, he cuts into it and asks a question. He listens and he takes his notes. Same with when Ayiko Tu was speaking as well. We have to take a break at this point. When we come back, we will go to that issue. What happened today between Tadia Sori and Isan Kuma when they battled it out before the same Justice Eric Che Bafo, who has become a famous judge following his decision on the PPP's case. You're watching PM Express. We will be back. Yeah, welcome back. You're watching PM Express. And we are discussing what transpired in court on this avalanche of cases that have been brought against the Electoral Commission the elections governing body of Ghana. My colleague, who is my guest today, <laughs> is Joseph Akable, who has been going in and out of court. So today, 
there was an adjournment of the case till 2 o'clock this afternoon, and then the case was called, and then the two lawyers appeared. It's Ankuma for Nana Konedu, it's Ankuma who had their case thrown out yeah. last, Des last described week. Described as an incompetent Des suit. Described as an incompetent <laughs> suit by another judge, um, because Judge, Clemson, judge yeah. Clemson, because he had put their issues together, they put together, uh, they were coming on two legs. Of fundamental human, human rights. rights yeah. And then, yes, they had come on two legs, so it was dismissed on the basis of that, so they refiled it. So today the case was heard. Tell us about what happened in court. Uh, the, the lawyers got to court quite early, and immediately the judge came in and called the matter. Uh, Thaddeus Sawyer was the very first to rise on his feet, and he reminded the judge that they had filed a motion before the court, asking that he recuses himself from hearing the matter. So he would like them to proceed to discuss that. In fact, he wants to move that motion. The judge said, okay, go ahead and do that. And his argument was a straightforward one. He's saying that uh, this was the same judge. He said, you were the same judge who ruled on the PPP case. And he says, the core of that matter is very similar to this one. And once you have taken a position already, that makes you biased towards this particular one. And it's very likely that you are going to take a decision. You come to the same conclusion. The same conclusion again. <laughs> <laughs> you come to the same conclusion. And there's something that we will not be happy about. So we think in the interest of justice and just to erase any uh, view or any suspicion of some bias, we think you should step away from the matter altogether. Then again, he makes the point that there are certain things that a judge, you, certain words he used in his ruling, that tends to show more of the judge going a bit personal. Uh, you could, he says you get a sense of the judge having a personal interest in the whole matter. And he talks about the point where the judge says, bereft of substance, referring to some of the arguments made by Thaddeus Sorry. In fact, in another, he actually said that Thaddeus Sorry was uh, uh, um, pedestrian, pedestrian and peripheral. Yes. So it, it, it appears Thaddeus Sorry was not happy about some of these things. And he says, uh, putting all together, it's very difficult for him to understand why the same judge wants to hear uh, this matter. And he feels the matters, the two issues are very similar. And as a result of that, he wants the judge to step aside. And then when he finished, he took his seat and the judge said, but in fact, once a while, the judge would even cut him and ask some questions again. And the judge once a while asked him, for instance, that so you think because of that, I shouldn't be on the matter. Then he reiterates the point again. So once he finished, he resumed the seat. Then Ace and Kuma opposed uh, that particular motion. So, and, he, and a, so a Sanguma by opposing said he did not agree with Tadeo Sorry that the judge should recuse himself. Yes, and he says that it's not because they are of the view that they've gone shopping for a judge, that's why they've ended up with this judge. But then again, he is of the view that the, the judge ruled on a matter of law. He says justices are in court to rule on cases. So you can't say that because this judge has ruled on a matter that is similar. Then again, if a different matter that is again similar comes the before that judge, you cannot hear it. Let me matter. announce that we have opened the phone lines. Please look on your screen, call us, and then make a contribution to this discussion. You are watching PM Express. Please call us. We want to hear your view on these matters, whether the elections are in trouble because of these cases which are pending before the courts. Yeah, so you was making uh, the point again that it doesn't mean that the judge cannot be allowed to hear a matter because he has said a similar one. He again says that these are questions of law. A question of law was put before uh, the lawyer, the judge in the case of Dr. Indum. This is another question of law we are putting before the judge and we expect him to be competent enough to take a very good decision. If it is necessary for it to be different, a different decision may be taken. But Thaddeus sorry, had raised uh, some uh, concerns about the fact that there are some of the things that they are very similar in, in terms of content and such that it will be very difficult to have them seem different in this matter. And, and, and if I may just um, speak to those issues, we know that in the Nana Kunedi case, there is one Salif, there is one Salif uh, 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 Abdullahi who signed uh, one of the nominees, who one of the subscribers. Yeah. We were told that he had, okay, let me pick a call. Um, um, I have Stanley from Konongu. Stanley, if you can hear me, good evening and Hello. welcome to PEM Express. Hello, Hello Stanley. Good evening. Yes, what's on your mind? Oh, I can't quite hear Stanley. Stanley, can you hear me? Okay, we've lost Stanley on the line. Please, Stanley, call us back if you can. But so the issues are Salif Abdullahi was the guy who endorsed one of the 432 persons who endorsed Nana Kunedu's forms. This guy, it turned out, the EC says, had involved himself in multiple registration in 2014. He had, been, he had engaged in double registration. 
And to that extent, he was not a properly registered voter because when you engage in double registration, your name is struck out of the register. So because he was engaged in double registration, he was not qualified to be a good, um, he could not, he was not on the register yeah. as a good uh, registered voter and therefore couldn't endorse. Let me talk to Mumuni from Obwasi. Mumuni, if you can hear me, good evening and welcome to PM Express. Hello, Mumuni. It doesn't look like our lines are helping us. But so that was the case for Nana Konedu. The EC says this guy is not a, a properly registered voter because his name has been struck out because he engaged in some criminality. To that extent, you are disqualified. In the Indum's case, Richard Asida endorsed the forms both in the Volta region and in the Central region. So those were the two cases. Tadeo Sori was arguing that in substance, these cases are similar. Yes, and, and more importantly, the point uh, that he likes to put across is the fact that they are all asking that they all admit they've made a mistake. And in some cases, even though they claim the mistake is not their fault, they're asking for an opportunity to be allowed to correct those mistakes. And this is a judge who has been very clear in his mind in stating that He's very emphatic by stating that there was no nomination period uh, fixed. Thaddeus again pointed out that even in a judge's ruling, the judge talked about uh, the fact that this is a ruling that he hopes will bring a closure to all the suits and he expects all others to take a cue from it. Mm -hmm. Again, Thaddeus Sorry says, you, Ace Ankuma, who is seated in the court's room now, in your affidavit in support of a case, you have cited his ruling in the case of Dr. Park Sindhu. You have cited that ruling several times over and over again. So how then can we trust you to come up with a different judgment? But then again, Isan Kumar's response is that in one breath, you are saying that the judge is biased, but you have also cited his ruling in parts of your affidavit in support. So when you uh, quote his uh, ruling, you don't want to be accused of bias, but when I quote, you're accusing a judge of bias, you're not being fair to the judge. And, and, and when, when Isan Kumar was making reference to Tadiosori's reference, to the judge's language, especially when the judge said that the EC was the EC's decision to disqualify Ndum was perverse, and yeah. that Tadiosori's arguments were uh, bereft of substance in some cases. Substance, they were incurably bad, and they were pedestrian and peripheral. Ace responded, and so I, yeah, yeah, he talked about the fact that I mean, once uh, you belong to the bar, you expect to be hit by some bullets, and he made reference to the fact that not long ago. He thought a suit was dismissed as incompetent suit. Mm -hmm. yes, and people, was extended, as incompetent. people extended the incompetence to mean he was an incompetent lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said, but he's not dead. Yeah, he's not dead. He says, I'm still alive. And, and he, in fact, he was not happy about the fact that it, was, it dominated the media space. It was massively reported across the country. This but he exactly. says... This is something we are talking <laughs> let, about. Let me announce <laughs> some phone lines. The phone line is zero. The other ones uh, do not appear to be our good friends. So you may try this one, 0302 Dial any of these, 0302 Dial any of these. We have a few minutes left. You can still contribute to the discussion. Yes, so uh, he said even his, his own application was described as incompetent and yeah. thrown out. Yeah, so he doesn't understand uh, why uh, he, he should have a problem with a judge using uh, such words. In fact, he quoted a litany of cases, quite a number of them, all to prove the point that judges have sat on cases that are very similar, but they've not been accused of bias. And he again says the ethics is very clear. The only time you can ask someone to recuse himself because of suspect, suspicion of bias is when you show that the person indeed has a personal interest. He says, in this case, what's the personal interest? Okay, let me try James. James, uh, James, good evening and welcome to, welcome to PM Express. Good evening, sir. Yes, what's on your mind? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the act of uh, Electra Commissioner Mame shall also say. I think the time left for the actual uh, voting is near. And you see, these court issues today, court issue, the following day, court issue, court has just given an order for you to just give back forms to Papa Kwasim's to rectify the anomalies. And you 
have gone back to the Supreme Court just to steal Papa Kwasi for for what I will say is not his fault. Okay, I think the Electoral Commission rather supposed to address those voters who the they will say endorsed their form. Okay, James, I think James, I think we have to leave it here. We don't have too much time. Thank you very much for your call. I have to talk to Bismarck, um, who is on the line. Bismarck, if you can hear me, please. Uh, what's on your mind? Hello, Bismarck. It doesn't look like Bismarck can hear me. But so, hello, Bismarck. Hello there. Yes. Good evening and welcome to PM Express. Yes, James, I can. Uh, Bismarck, I can hello? hear you. I can hear you, Bismarck. Yeah, my contribution is that the EC seems not to be prepared for this year's election. What if EC with it? Uh, oh, hello? Yes, I'm listening to you, Bismarck. It seems I have lost Bismarck. Am I online? Yes, Bismarck, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying that the EC seems not to be prepared for this year's election. Why what is that? The rule is made if the ruling is made, then EC will go to the same court for clarity. I think if the uh, same rulings are made against the party, they can also go back to the same court for clarity. And that will take us up to next year. Okay, Bismarck, thank you. Bismarck, you are our last caller. Thank you very much for calling. So Bismarck and James, thank you for your contribution to this discussion. Uh, so Joseph, they made all the arguments. And then what did the, the judge say? Essentially, he's staying on. Uh, he disagrees. He feels that... Uh, they have failed to, Thaios has failed to point out how he may be biased. And he says, as a judge, he has the right to hear all matters until he feels that indeed someone has submitted enough evidence to show that he'll be biased. He says he can change his mind. It depends on the facts that is presented before him. And he'll stay on and hear the matter. So he says he's not going anywhere. Exactly. He's one of the six judges uh, selected by, by the, the Chief, Chief Justice, Justice, Justice Georgina Tudera Wood to hear these matters and dispose them of. Yes, so and, and, and in fact, on a bit about he getting a bit pas uh, personal and uh, sometimes passionate, uh, he says that he loves his work, he loves his country, and he wants to work for his country. And if you see that as he being personal, he has no problem when with it. When is he giving his judgment on this? Uh, he actually wanted to fix a date, but uh, Thaddeus, sorry, uh, didn't object to that. He says a major ruling like this has been given, so we needed a bit of time. So they are coming back on Monday, they'll take their final comments, and you'll fix a date for ruling. Joseph, thank you. Thank I'm you. most grateful. If you're watching PM Express, my guest has been Joseph Akable. He's our correspondent, a court reporter. Um, he's brought us all the nitty gritties of what happened in court. God willing, we will bring you another exciting discussion on PM Express. Until then, my name is Malik Kabaz Dabu. Do have a wonderful, wonderful.